This is the kind of award-winning sentence that admission officers want and need. Welcome, welcome back, friends. In this series, I, Kevin Zen, Yale grad, Exeter grad, breakdancer, YouTuber, plant dad, and professional college counselor will be reviewing your college essays. Every time I make one of these videos, you guys are always asking when the next opportunity will be to have your essay reviewed. And the answer to that question is subscribe. No, seriously, because that way you can actually see our community posts, which is when I write an update and call for submissions. We've done four of these videos so far. We've reviewed eight Common App essays in total, but the next essays that I'd like to review with you guys would actually be some UC essays and or supplementals, since I know those are due soon. The two essays that we're going to take a look at today are both pretty good essays, but we're going to spend some time talking about how to truly elevate them into extraordinary common app essays. And so without further ado, let's dive right in. This first essay is about a topic that I have never seen before, even after reading hundreds of common app essays. It's about spike ball. As the world came to a standstill during the COVID-19 pandemic, seemingly everyone picked up new hobbies. Some people started to work out, others got into cooking. Everyone binged at least a couple of Netflix shows. Initially, it was fun, like an extended staycation, but it soon gave way to extreme boredom. A teenager can only be housebound for so long. I do really like the use of some, others. That's a nice little structure that we can use. The tone is also very jovial and it feels youthful, young, and I really like this ending as well. But that being said, a lot of this is just background information that most people know. And we could potentially get away with removing this section entirely and just starting the essay here. If the student wanted to keep this section, it would be more powerful to talk about what they did. So instead of saying some people started to work out, this student could write, I started to work out, I got into cooking, I watched a few Netflix shows, and that way we get a better sense of who this applicant really is and what they did before they plunged into spike ball. After much pleading, a few friends and I convinced our parents to let us play outside if we kept our distance from each other. Although discouraged at first, we soon discovered the perfect pandemic activity. Spike ball. Standard play has four people positioned the CDC approved six feet away from a circular trampoline like net. In teams of two, players strategically hit a squishy yellow ball trying to outwit their opponents. When we first started playing, none of us were good. I might make this the beginning of a new paragraph. As we continued to play throughout that extended summer, little by little, we improved. We learned the more complex rules and serve styles and our games grew into neighborhood tournaments. Looking back, I realized how lucky I was to have this outlet. Spike ball was the perfect vehicle to reconnect with friends and make new ones. The barrel of laughs we shared as we chased a little ball around the yard brought joy into an otherwise bleak period of life. The way that spike ball is introduced, as well as the tone and the word choice that this student is using was really fun. I like strategically, squishy, outwit, but this paragraph here, it feels a little bit vague. It feels a little bit general. What exactly are those complex rules and nuances of the game of spike ball? Teach us a little bit about different serve styles. Like for instance, you could say, I perfected an underhand slice serve. Another opportunity for more detail is when the student says, we grew it into neighborhood tournaments. I'd love to see how this applicant includes others, right? Like he could say, we got younger kids, some were just in elementary school, we got older folks who wanted to get off the couch, and we started organizing different leagues based on skill or age or schedule, and that would show that this student is more of an organizer as well. Now take a look at this last sentence in this paragraph. It's really interesting because it begins with something that's quite unique, saying barrel of laughs. I've never really heard that before, but then the student actually uses a very recognizable cliche like chasing a little ball around the yard. That's something that evokes kind of these, you know, nostalgic family sports games in the yard and honestly kind of conjures up a sense of camaraderie. So really well done. During the same time, I encountered something much darker, something that shook my understanding of the world to its core. I met Emma. I still remember her timidly walking into my home for the first time. Her downcast face with eyes like death betrayed a lifetime of unspeakable horrors. Emma is a survivor of sex trafficking. I naively thought sex trafficking was the subject of Hollywood movies or an issue that happens in far off countries. Apparently not. Over 300,000 American children are trafficked each year. Traffickers typically aren't strangers abducting children overseas. Nearly 50% of victims are trafficked by a family member or someone close to them. Emma was one of those victims. I felt chills running down my spine as Emma recounted her story. The details of her physical and emotional abuse, of psychological trauma and manipulation left an indelible mark on my soul. It was a stark reminder to step out of my comfort zone and act. So I did. Mentioning Emma is definitely a key part of the narrative, and I wouldn't suggest this student take her out. 
but there are a few consistency issues. For instance, why did Emma walk into this applicant's home for the first time? I wish it was a little bit more clearly connected to Spikeball. Maybe he was trying to recruit more people to the league, more people for neighborhood tournaments, and that's how the student ran into Emma. But right now, it's not clear why, how she entered his life. Another issue is that it seems very strange that Emma would suddenly just open up about this and talk about some really traumatic issues that have happened in her life. So I'm curious to know if this happened over a longer period of time, if this student tried to create a relationship with Emma and then after several weeks or months, then she felt comfortable opening up. I really want you guys to pay attention to these issues because we see so many different variations of the same issues happen in so many of the common apps that you guys sent us. For instance, this student starts talking about statistics, but mentioning statistics isn't really what's going to get you accepted into college, right? It would be a little bit better if this student started talking about the research that they did to go above and beyond and learn about this issue. Or if this student started talking about what makes sex trafficking particularly egregious and horrible in their neighborhood, in their city. That's a really powerful strategy, taking a broader issue and then discussing how it affects your community on a local level, on a personal level. Last but not least, we had some cliches. And in this case, the cliches are not as good because one, they're related to the problem, and two, there's just too many of them. Moving on to the solution. I became dedicated to serving survivors like Emma through the Safe House Project, a national organization combating domestic human trafficking. I help survivors by delivering food and clothing, moving survivors into safe houses, volunteering a Safe House Project Project fundraisers and attending community awareness events. Now this is a really weak sentence because although it sounds specific, this is a common mistake that we call the resume dump. How do we fix this? Specificity. Rather than saying something like, I move survivors into safe houses, it would be far more powerful to actually include a few more names and talk about what exactly this applicant did to improve the environment of the safe house. There's so many different ways to fundraise. In fact, there's probably an infinite number of ways to fundraise, whether it's from a bake sale to making cold calls and soliciting donations. So we really need to know how exactly the student raised funds. And then finally, just saying like you attend events, 99% of high schoolers can say, I attended some community event, some awareness event. We need to see a way more proactive and unique role in these events. The most impactful moments were simply spending time with survivors and listening to their stories. I've learned that I don't need to have answers or solutions to their pain. Sometimes sharing a meal and a conversation is enough. Fast forward to junior year. I had gone from playing spike ball with some of my neighborhood friends to becoming vice president of the Ocean Lakes Spike Ball Club. I helped grow the club from a few classmates to one of the largest and fastest growing clubs at Ocean Lakes. Again, repetition, just saying like I grew it into a fast growing club is a little redundant, allowing more high schoolers to connect with others. Occasionally, I'd organize small tournaments for members of the club to seek more competition I signed the club up for a citywide tournament. Unexpectedly, we won and made a name for ourselves as one of the largest spike ball communities in Virginia Beach. While there's definitely a clear leadership and proactivity in this paragraph and this section, there's still some issues that I'm seeing again and again and again in the college essays that you guys send us. We have a larger structural issue, which is that we ping pong back and forth between these different extracurriculars. And I find myself wondering, what does the sex trafficking safe house project have to do with the Ocean Lakes Spike Ball Club? Let's take a look at the conclusion. I collaborated with the marketing team at the Safe House Virginia Beach Roundnet, NHS, and SCA to spread the word. I secured sponsorships from local businesses and Spike Ball Inc. The tournament included over 50 participants, raising more than $1,000 for the organization. It also gave me a chance to educate my fellow high schoolers on an issue most were unfamiliar with. Let's just think about the two paragraphs of solution that we just read. This one is way way better than the previous one, right? I think just going one or two steps further and explaining how did you collaborate with the marketing team? How did you secure sponsorships? How did you educate fellow high schoolers on this issue? Even that change alone would probably help improve this essay by over five or 10%. Through this experience, I witnessed the butterfly effect in action two experiences in my life intertwined into one and became the catalyst to create a much larger impact on my community. I use the game I love as a force for good, casting light on an issue that is now deeply personal to me. The issue with this conclusion is that like many, it is simply a regurgitation of the story. You're basically just telling us what you've already shown us. This student just refused to sit around and do nothing. I see tons of proactivity and his conclusion should be about that core message. That was the Spikeball Common App essay. I have another really exciting one for us 
to take a look at in just a few moments. But before that, please don't hesitate to reach out to us, to contact us if you would like your essay professionally edited and reviewed by a member of our team. Just visit www.elevated.school slash edit my essay. We're talking line by line comments, a paragraph reflection, summary at the end with big picture feedback, as well as a rating and access to all of our rubrics. We're gonna pause real quick for a quick break and then I'll see you guys for Common App Essay number two. I hope you guys enjoyed that clip. When I'm not editing essays or making YouTube videos, I'm usually spinning on my head or whipping out some windmill flares. But anyways, let's take a look at common app essay number two. Damp air and cold winds, clothes that never really dry. Silent empty streets bar the occasional truck winding up the steep inclines. Much like Sheldon Cooper, my favorite character from the show Big Bang Theory, I despise change. Naturally, I wasn't a fan of my hill station home in Freetown, Sierra Leone, a stark contrast to the loud sunny streets of Doc. I wasn't there by choice. My dad got a better paying job at the Sierra Leone office of UNFPA. College admission officers often don't know what this means. Sometimes they Google these terms and sometimes they don't, but it might be helpful to spell out what this means. Or if you're worried that this is too many words, you can just say my dad got a better paying job. And my parents, despite my tearful protest, decided we would pack up our lives and move to West Africa indefinitely. I like ending with this one word sentence. A lot of students neglect ending their paragraphs strong, and this is a very simple, effective way to do that, but just make sure that you don't end every single paragraph with like a one word sentence. Just use it sparingly and intentionally. Turns out our housing situation was the least of my problems. I enrolled in the American International School in Freetown. My seventh grade classroom was a melting pot of accents, cultures, and nationalities. Unfortunately, I was the only South Asian at the school and a seasoned introvert. So it felt utterly impossible to make meaningful connections with my peers. While friendly and welcoming, they were just too different. Unlike my friends back home, they didn't obsess over Bollywood or follow cricket religiously. They loved Taylor Swift and were LeBron James fanatics. Too much of this essay already, how many words is this? 190 words. Almost a third of your essay is about things happening to the student, problems that the student has faced. And we want to make sure that pretty much after the first paragraph, we're seeing tangible concrete actions that the student is making or taking. At the end of the day, this essay is about you. You need to be writing about how you overcame your situation, what changes you made, what kind of growth you experienced in light or in face of these setbacks, problems in your situation. That's ultimately what's gonna get you accepted. There was no debating society, cricket team, or chess club, all the things I loved in my old school. Instead, we were offered after school drama and soccer practice. Worst of all, I struggled to acclimatize to the American Common Core curriculum after a lifetime of memorization-based education in Bangladesh. My slipping grades were a nasty shock for my brown parents who were used to seeing straight A's in my report card. It suddenly felt as though my life had been turned on its head. So I learned to live upside down. I think this is the beginning of the solution and my professional recommendation at this point is to chop out one of the background information paragraphs because we need to get here way, 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 way faster. At school, I threw myself into activities, especially those that made me uncomfortable. I played Queen Titania for the school's rendition of Midsummer Night's Dream. The drama club ran out of girls. Took an elective class to learn the local language Creo and even asked out a crush for the first time. This is the level of specificity that we're looking for, that admission officers want and need. A lot of students make this cliche claim like, oh, I embraced the uncomfortable. I tried something new. I got out of my comfort zone. But this tangible proof is incredibly powerful. My endeavors weren't flawless. My acting was robotic. I couldn't pronounce Gabakanda, Creole for determined. For the life of me, and yes, the girl turned me down. I like that humor, and I actually like that the student talks a little bit about their failures. Technically, yeah, this is problem, but this is a much better problem than the problems the student mentioned earlier in the first three paragraphs, because this showcases way more vulnerability and specificity. But with each embarrassing step back, I took two steps forward. Mm, I'm not that crazy about this sentence. We could even just replace this with something like, but I kept showing up. I was made head of the soccer team. As captain, I learned to rally my troops through rough patches, share our wins and shoulder our losses. This sentence, as you can see, is a little bit cliche. And even though it has three elements, one, two, 
three, compare it to this sentence over here where we have three elements, one, two, and three. And you can see which sentence is way better. Through soccer, I found competition, leadership, a spot at the lunch table, and most importantly, a sense of community and brotherhood. Perhaps another way this student could add some more specificity is by actually including some names of their soccer teammates and talk about how you established and started forming bonds with them. We learn so much about the kind of applicant and person you are through your relationships. I also helped organize our school's culture night. That was when I realized that being the only South Asian student was perhaps a blessing in disguise. I became a liaison to my culture as I treated my classmates to homemade traditional sweets and stories of Bangladesh. In exchange, I got to experience pieces of all the lives around me. Kimchi fried rice shared with our Korean goalkeeper after games, recollections of the Rwandan genocide by a classmate's dad, and the foster home upbringing of my Nigerian friend. Another really great sentence that I'm gonna bold. It's not quite as good as the one earlier, but it's, it's good. I stopped viewing our differences as irreconcilable obstacles and instead saw them for what they truly were, something to be celebrated and not feared. A little tad cliche, but I think it's fine for now. Five years later, I am still a seasoned introvert who loves playing chess and making beats on his laptop. Even one or two adjectives like lo-fi, Afro beats, that adds more flavor to the story. However, I am no longer content in the comfort of the status quo. Instead, I seek to expand my horizons each day, whether it be founding a science magazine or traveling to Vietnam alone to debate for the national team. More about the science magazine could be nice, like if you said neuroscience or if you said a microbiology magazine, but also allowing myself to be imperfect. I may still be a Sheldon Cooper, but I'm no longer the fussy season one Sheldon who would throw tantrums if anyone sat on his place on the couch. I am the final season Sheldon who, spoiler alert, gave up the couch in entirely to marry Amy. I really love this comparison. This is one of the highlights of the essay, literally. However, selflessness is not really one of the key tenets of this essay so far. It's more about personal growth and embracing change. And in the next sentence, the student touches upon this theme by saying, because change can often be good. While Big Bang Theory ended in season 12, I look forward to the next four seasons of life in college and then beyond, to face numerous terrifying challenges, experience exhilarating adventures, and meet amazing people from all across the world. I just hope my dorms won't be quite as damp this last line is not quite working for me, it falls a little flat. This list over here is relatively vague. So there were some sentences which were home runs and just kind of hit it out of the park. This sentence here is probably the best in the entire essay. If you guys learned anything today, it would be to steal like an artist and use this level of detail in your own essays. At the same time, we also had vaguer sentences like these, which definitely need some more love and attention. Moving on to the ratings. Before I just flat out tell you the score, I think it might be helpful if you guys considered what you would rate the essay, and then we can see if our numbers match up. The first essay we looked at, I would rate a 6.5. It's somewhere between okay and good. I really wanted to give the spike ball essay a seven, but it did have some red flags. The biggest one that comes to mind being too much background information in the beginning. We could shorten that hook a little bit. And then there was just that one paragraph which just sounded like it was taken from a resume, really lacking personality or flavor. The second essay I think was a little bit better. I would rate it just above a seven. There were still some red flags, namely the problem solution ratio, the first three, paragraphs were all about background problem and they definitely could have been shortened even just trimming it down from 300 words to 200 words dedicating those extra 100 words for really concrete, unique solutions that would improve the essay by over 10%. And also, I wish there was more proof of selflessness. I feel like the student could have easily included that when they were talking about becoming their soccer captain or sharing their cultural identity, their Bangladesh sweet treats and stories with their schoolmates. So there you have it, friends. Two more Common App essays reviewed by yours truly. I sincerely hope you found this content and this video useful, helpful. Make sure you're following along and incorporating these suggestions because like I said we see these issues happen in essays over and over and over again. As I've mentioned in previous videos we've already gone to college, been there, done that and so what we're trying to do here is just serve you guys, the next generation. Please 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 don't forget to like and subscribe. It's such a small action but it really goes a long way and if you guys are not subscribed then you won't be able to see the next time I write a post and I call for more submissions for college essays. So be sure to do that and keep an eye out. On behalf of of everyone at Elevate Ed. We wish you the best of luck on your college application journey. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'm Kevin Zen. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your time, your attention, and I'll catch you at the next one. Pa -pa 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 Peace.